the last type of the refrigeration cycle which we are going to uh, introduce to you is absorption refrigeration systems or ARS. This type of the refrigeration actually is not that much different from vapor uh, compression refrigeration side. The difference is how we provide a, a high pressure uh, working fluid in the site. If you remember, in the vapor compression uh, refrigeration cycle, we had a compressor. This compressor is used to compress the uh, working fluid and convert and change its uh, phase from gas to liquid which that uh, this phase change process uh, will cause the reduction also of the temperature and then again once the uh, working fluid goes to its uh, initial phase from liquid to the gas it absorbs the thermal energy from the environment as you can see here, here we compress it uh, then it goes to condenser and expansion well and uh, finally a welfare. Then how well, what are the other ways to uh, change the phase or uh, change the pressure uh, of a working flow? In this system, this absorption refrigeration system, we can use some special working flow which we just can use a heat source to, uh, to change their uh, phase. This phase change process can be done by increasing the temperature of them, not directly by, by some modification, but here I'm just going to show, to, show uh, to you that the only difference between this ARS and the vapor compression of refrigeration cycle is this part, the compression, the compressor part. We remove the compressor and add this uh, box. Now I'm going to discuss more about this box. The rest of that is similar to the vapor compression cycle. Let's see what we have inside this box. If you notice, notice in this box, we have a uh, uh, pump, we have a uh, absorber absorber and we have a generator these three are main components in this box the solar energy you know this uh, energy source can be any type of the energy source it can be geothermal it can be a boiler which uh, but, uh, but the source of that boiler should be uh, uh, inexpensive because generally COP of this kind of the refrigeration system is very low, less than one usually. So if we have a, in an, uh, an inexpensive source of heat or energy, we can use this system as is mentioned here. If we have uh, a source of inexpensive thermal energy at temperature of 100 to 200 degrees Celsius, this absorption refrigeration system can be used like geothermal energy, solar energy, waste heat from cogeneration, and so on. And uh, how it works, you know, usually we use ammonia as the working fluid in this cycle. As I told you, this part, the evaporator condenser expansion valve is similar to vapor compression cycle. So the phase change here in this process is done by the increase the temperature of the ammonia. But how we can increase its temperature and how we can change its phase in this box? Pure ammonia or NH3 is introduced to an absorber. In absorber, you know, the pure NH3 or ammonia here is gas. The gas of Ammonia is introduced to this absorber, which is a chamber, and we have also water inside the chamber. So we have a, a, a combination, a mixture, or uh, and this uh, ammonia is uh, willing to 
uh, solve or dissolve in the uh, water or aqua or H2O. So we, after we introduce the gas of ammonia to this chamber, which is contain water, we will have NH3 or ammonia plus water. NH3 plus H2O mixture here. Then this mixture of NH3 and H2, which is a solution, is uh, sent to a generator. This uh, is done by a pump. By a pump, this solution, which is a liquid, the gas is dissolved in it, uh, is uh, sent to a generator. In the generator, the temperature of the this NH3 plus H2O or ammonia and water is increased. And due to this increase in the temperature, the ammonia is separated from the water. The reason is, as much as the temperature of the mixture is lower, more ammonia is willing to mix with the water or to uh, dissolve in the water. So here we have low temperature and if we reduce the temperature, more ammonia is will uh, dissolve in the dissolve in the water. So we will have more ammonia plus H2O, more ammonia inside the H2O. Once it goes to generator, the temperature of the generator is increased due to the thermal energy, which is, can be solar energy or any type of other energy, and the temperature of the solution is increased. Ammonia is separated from the water, and this ammonia is sent to a rectifier, which this rectifier is a device to prevent of the entrance of the water to the condenser. Then pure NH3, which uh, here the ammonia, uh, the pressure of ammonia is higher and it is introduced to the condenser. So the compression here is done by the uh, uh, transportation. You know, here in this cycle, if you notice, we have H2O. This H2O is the transport medium. It, uh, it transports uh, the ammonia from the, ab uh, from the absorber to the generator, as you can see here. And this pure NH3 here is high pressure NH3. Here we have low pressure NH3 or ammonia. So uh, similarly, you know, we have done the compression by this cycle. And this water, it will uh, again bring back to the absorber and through this, it will go to a regenerator. However, regenerator here and even this cooling water are extra component for this cycle. The main component is absorber. Uh, and the this energy source and the generator. The rest of that are the component which can improve the efficiency or COP of this refrigeration site. So we have this cooling water to reduce the temperature to provide uh, the possibility of more NH3 in, to mix with the H2O and the pump to send the, you know, the reason why this system, this absorption refrigeration system is work, it, it works, is this part, you know, instead of a turbine or uh, something to deliver the uh, gas, here we just transfer liquid and the required work to transfer liquid by a pump is much lower than the required work input uh, to transfer the uh, the gas, the, uh, the medium, or a working fluid uh, in gas phase. We have already discussed about that in previous chapters that the uh, required work input for the pump or the required work input for any medium depends on the specific volume of the working fluid. As much as the specific volume is lower, then the uh, 
required working food is lower for the pump. So here, the work of the pump also sometimes is neglected even in our calculation. So here we just need to have a energy source like what you can see here. And usually the working fluid is ammonia. The regenerator also here and this expansion valve help to have a cooler uh, uh, mixture here which helps to and also here the it can provide higher temperature here to uh, change the phase of the ammonia or to separate the uh, ammonia from the uh, water much easier or more uh, you know here we need to have in the generator we need to have higher temperature in the absorber we need to lower temperature so here the q is transferred to the this line because it is going to the generator but and here the q is uh, uh, captured absorbed from this line because and we have expansion valve to reduce the temperature of the water which comes to this uh, absorber and here lower temperature we require here we need higher temperature and by this we can provide you know the rest of that is similar to vapor compression refrigeration cycle only this part is different to provide the high pressure and uh, high pressure ammonia in the cycle here is also some explanation about uh, this cycle this absorption of uh, refrigeration system or ARS involved absorption of refrigerant, which usually is ammonia, by a transport medium, which is usually uh, water. The most widely used system is the ammonia water system, like what I have already shown to you, where ammonia in H3 serves as the refrigerant and water as the transport medium. Other systems include water lithium bromide, which is another type of the refrigerant and also water lithium chloride systems where water serves as the refrigerant but we have a limitation when water is the refrigerant these systems are limited to the application such as AC where the minimum temperature is above the freezing point of the water as a refrigerant compared with the vapor compression refrigeration systems ARS have one major advantage. The advantage I've already told you, a liquid is compressed instead of a vapor, and as a result, the work input is very small, on the order of 1% of the heat supply to the generator. So, usually we neglect the required work input for the pump, and only requirement for this cycle is this energy source which can come from a uh, solar system and these ARS are classified as heat driven system if you notice here it is interesting we have uh, provided the cooling system or refrigerator by using heat source and it is in an interesting uh, properties of this type of the refrigeration system ARS are much more expensive than the vapor compression refrigeration system. It is obvious because of these too many uh, components which we have in this cycle compared to just one compressor in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. When it is convenient to use this cycle, when we have uh, a heat source, which is inexpensive compared to the electricity which is required to run compressors. So if the price of electricity is high, to use the vapor compression refrigeration cycle and use a compressor. And if we have a heat source like solar energy, like uh, in a cogeneration system or in a geothermal, uh, if we have a geothermal heat source, which is actually uh, a free, source of energy then we can use this system and the only cost is the cost initial cost to provide those components for the cycle 
and due to this reason these ARS are primarily used in large commercial and industrial installation one <coughs> excuse me where we need a uh, big uh, amount or huge amount of the heat uh, well, cooling for a uh, environment now let's see how we can calculate the COP for this cycle, this ARS cycle. COP for absorption refrigeration system, again, it requires desired output divided by required input. Desired output also in this cycle is QL, the heat which is absorbed from the refrigerated area. Required input in this case is Q generate, uh, for generator. Here, the uh, solar which come from solar, for example, here. Plus W pump in, or the required work for the pump in the cycle. But as I told you, W pump is much smaller than the Q for generator. So usually we ignore this. And the COP for absorption refrigeration system is only equal to QL divided by Q generator. So by this we can calculate COP4 and ARS. And usually COP4 actual absorption refrigeration system is less than one. But to understand how much is the maximum possible for an ideal absorption refrigeration system, how much is the maximum efficiency, we can assume that these uh ARS is working in a reversible, is working uh, with a reversible heat engine. Then the heat source uh, for this uh, uh, ARS is a reversible heat engine. Then the heat source, and we have a reversible heat engine, and T0 to the environment. This is our heat source to provide that Q generator. And uh it depends on the you know the this q generated it uh, depends on the how much is reversible of uh, the, how much is the efficiency of the heat engine and this uh q generated or required heat for the ars provided by this reversible heat engine it will and we need to assume that we have a reversible refrigerator also the uh, the ARS is a reversible refrigerator which uh, capture uh, TL, uh, capture QL from refrigerated space which is temperature is TL and release it to the environment which is temperature is T0. If you notice here we have TS, temperature of this, the source, its source, T0, temperature of the environment and TL temperature of the refrigerated space. By this, you know, QL, the amount of the heat which is absorbed from the refrigerated space, it depends on the COP of the reversible refrigerator, which is here, which uh, depends on the also the W, which come from the, uh, the work input for the reversible refrigerator. By this configuration, we can write the W is equal to the, uh, the thermal efficiency of reversible heat engine times Q generated. And because here we assume all of the processes and cycle are reversible, then if you remember the thermal efficiency of this reversible heat engine is equal to 1 minus T0 divided by Ts. It, it only depends on the temperature of the source uh, the, of the heat source and sink. Sink here is uh, environment. So 1 minus T0 divided by Ts times Q generated. How about QL? QL is coefficient of performance for reversible refrigerator times W and uh, COP for a uh, reversible refrigerator is equal to TL divided by T0 minus TL. We had these uh, in previous sessions for a COP of reversible refrigerator. 
times W, W is the work which is required here for uh, heat engine and finally COP for reversible absorption for whole cycle is equal to QL divided by Q generated. QL we have calculated here, Q generated by uh, uh, manipulation and restructuring of this equation, you can write based on the Q generation, then QL divided by Q generated will be equal to 1 minus T0 divided by TS times TL divided by T0 minus TL, which T here is based on Kelvin in this equation T or temperature of the T0 is temperature of the environment, T is temperature of the uh, heat source, and TL is temperature of the refrigerated space. And we need to write them based on the Kelvin. And you can see the maximum COP of the reversible absorption refrigeration system is only dependent on the temperatures of the heat source, environment, and the temperature of the refrigerated space and see the equation which we can use to calculate the maximum efficiency of this cycle. This air conditioning system based on this absorption refrigeration system also called absorption chillers perform best when the heat source can supply heat at a high temperature with later temperature drop. So once we have a heat source with high temperature the efficiency of the cycle is of these ARS is even higher as much as the temperature of the heat source or TS is higher temperature of the COP also will be high. By this we reach uh, by this we reach end of uh, uh, this chapter actually this is the last type of the refrigeration system which I have introduced to you.